Christ. That's why Jesus said, this is my body and this is my blood. So for me, I'm grateful. Okay, well, last, um, last Wednesday night we started talking about the wisdom of God. And wisdom, you know, we have a tendency to think wisdom is to be attained, I'm reaching, I'm trying to get. When we learned last week that wisdom is a person, and that person is Jesus Christ. He's grace, he's wisdom, he's righteousness. He is wisdom to us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, or verse 30, it says he's been made to us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Wonderful, wonderful. And wisdom was first. Let me read to you real quickly Psalm chapter 1. We'll have to just have an abbreviated version of the lesson tonight because it's so wonderful to take communion. You don't ever want to cut that short. But let's read this. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, this, this portion of scripture that we're going to look at is all about wisdom. It's not about sin or judgment or uh, the keeping of the Ten Commandments. This is about wisdom. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly or the wisdom of the world, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord or in the word of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Now you could say just the opposite. Instead of saying blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You could say blessed is the man who walks after the wisdom of the Lord. Could you not? Couldn't you just turn it around? And it says about that man that he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. And we said last week, you know, we, we have a tendency to say, well, I need help with my marriage, or I need, I need help with my finances, I need deliverance, I need all these things that we need, when what we need is wisdom from heaven. And we talked about that there's two kinds of wisdom. There's earthly wisdom that, that is based on sensual things, not, not sexual, sensual, um, which is your touch, your taste, your hearing, your feeling, your seeing. Um, but then there's wisdom that is from above. And we talked about how that earthly wisdom is temporary. It's even fickle, isn't it? Because, you know, back in the 60s, Dr. Spock was popular. But I asked Danette last week, do you know who Dr. Spock is? And she said, on Star Wars? No, no, we're talking about he was a child psychologist who thought he knew everything. Everything changes over time. Back in the um, 80s, it was growing kids God's way. And then it was baby wise and, you know, all the different wisdom of the ages. Well, I just have a funny video clip. A lot of you will recognize this from a movie. But it's about natural wisdom and uh, looking for the wrong ways to solve a problem. But the reason I showed this is because that is not too far-fetched from what we do in life. We conjure up ideas and schemes of how to solve our problems, and then it backfires on us. Yeah. True? Yeah. We do. When the right kind of wisdom in our life will keep those kind of things, no matter how silly or ridiculous they look, keep us from having those oops moments. God wants to help us solve every single problem. And sometimes we need to watch something that silly just to make us realize how ridiculous we get sometimes in trying to solve our problems when the Bible clearly says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 24 that he is made. Look at the scripture. It says, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and he's the wisdom of God. He will help you in every situation of life, in your business, in your family, in your marriage. He is the wisdom of God. Christ is, say that with me, Christ is wisdom. Christ is wisdom. And here's the good news. You have him on the inside of you. Amen? He's not far away and you're not out there trying to reach it or get it. He's in here. But I think that, um, sad to say, that we have for so long thought that we were displeasing to God and that he was out here and that our conduct and our behavior or our failures or our offenses, whatever they are, have offended 
the Holy Spirit to the point where he's out here somewhere waiting for the right invitation or the right moment to come back in here. But he is always here, will never leave you, will never forsake you. You don't ever have to wonder if he is in you. He is in you. I'm telling you the truth. If you get anything tonight, get that he is in you. There's a song, very, very popular in, um, in praise and worship scenes over the last 15 years that people ask me, why, why don't you ever, why won't you ever sing this song? And um, I guess because we're on the airwaves, I can't tell you the exact words to the song. I, w I don't want to offend anybody, but the, the, the implication of the song is that he's not near and maybe he'll be your friend. Maybe he'll draw close. We can only hope and pray. Very, very popular song. Um, I would never sing a song like that because I would never want to give you the impression that he would ever leave you. I don't want to confuse you in a worship setting that maybe he's here and maybe he's not. You know, even, even when we sing songs, we're very careful not to sing songs like um, Welcome Holy Spirit, as if he wasn't like, go ahead, come in. Oh, come, come on in the door. You're, you're welcome here. No, he's here because you are here. So that means wisdom is here because he is here, because Jesus is here, because you are here. You walked in the door with all of the wisdom you will ever get in life. Because he is in you, in wisdom. Let me read to you from the Message Bible, 1 Corinthians. Grab my glasses. What it says about his wisdom. I'm, I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It says, the spirit... Not, to cont not content to flit around on the surface, dives into the depths of God and brings out what God planned along. For whoever knows what you're thinking and planning except you yourself. Now, isn't that right? How, how many times have you said, if you really knew me, you would know that I wouldn't do that or I would do that? You know, there's been times in, um, throughout life where somebody has accused me or... Um, um, assessed me in a certain way and I my comment to that is you don't know my heart then you don't know the heart of the matter you don't know the spirit of Cindy and this scripture right here clearly clearly says no one can know the spirit of a person except the spirit of that person we can like even my husband you know after this many years of marriage wouldn't it be grand for me to say, I know him. I know everything about him. No, I know him better than anybody else knows him, but I don't know everything because only the spirit of a man can know the man himself, right? Okay, so it says here about God. It says, whoever knows what you're thinking and planning except you yourself. God is the same, except that he not only knows what he's thinking, but he lets us in on it. God offers a full report on the gifts of life and salvation that he is giving us. We don't have to rely on the world's guesses and the world's opinions. We didn't learn this by reading books or going to school. We learned it from God who taught us person to person through Jesus. And we're passing it on to you in a personal way. You see, the unspiritual self, just as it is by nature can't receive the gifts of God's spirit. There's no capacity for them. They seem like silliness. Spirit can only be known by spirit. God's spirit and our spirit in open communion. Spiritually alive, we have access to everything God's spirit is doing. Isaiah's question, is there anyone around who knows God's spirit? Anyone who knows what he is doing has been answered. Christ knows, and we have Christ's spirit. You, how can anyone know the man unless he has the spirit of the man? You can know because you have Christ's spirit. 
So you can know what the Spirit of God is saying. You can know wisdom. Wisdom is not far off, and it's not trying to be obtained. Wisdom is resident in you, and his name is Jesus, and his Spirit lives in you. So everything that is of his Spirit is in you, and you have it already. Glory to God. And yet we live short of wisdom. Somebody really worked havoc on these. You see that? <laughs> um, is that clear? Did I, did I say that in a real way that you got that Jesus on the inside? But now here's, here's what I think. I was, th I was meditating on this, and I was thinking back about my own life. That there was times in my life that I didn't think that I deserved wisdom because of decisions I had made, poor judgments I had made. And I, at one time, I had memorized the whole book of James. And so I knew the scripture, James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, and this is the King James Version, who gives liberally to all without finding fault. Well, I knew what it said, but then I read it in the NIV. If any of you lacks wisdom... You should ask God, who gives generously, generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Now, you have to kind of sit back and think about that scripture a little bit. He's going to, if you ask for wisdom, the Bible says he will give it to you without taking account of anything you've done. That's what without finding fault means. Without taking into account that maybe this is your own fault. Man, as parents, we love that term, you made your bed, so sleep in it. God does not say that to us. That is, that is earthly wisdom. That is not heavenly wisdom. God never says, you made your bed, sleep in it. Thank you, Lord. It says he gives generously to all without finding fault. And I had to get over my perception of God that he was far off to be obtained through some kind of spiritual time travel through this tunnel that swirled. And at the end of that tunnel was this huge man with white hair and glowing eyes. Do you know what I'm saying? We've seen so many images on TV of what God is supposed to look like. It's not James Earl Jones. It's not Samuel Glover. It's not, you know, Samuel L. J. All those guys. That's not what God looks like. And he's not an ogre. And he is not sitting on a throne of judgment. He, all, Jesus was already judged. It's not a throne of judgment towards his people. And so I had to get over that image that, of I, that I had of him that I kind of approached with trepidation. Will he give it to me if I ask him? Doesn't his word say repeatedly, ask and it shall be given? Doesn't it say keep on asking? Doesn't his word say, call to me and I will show you great and mighty things? Show you? Show you? Doesn't that mean I have to have my eyes involved, maybe my ears involved, my thinking involved? He wants to show us some things. He's not withholding information from you. In fact, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23, he says, Surely, surely I will make known my wisdom unto you. Surely I will make known my wisdom unto you. And it also says, Surely I will pour my spirit in you. There was no condition to that. He just says he gives generously to all without finding fault. And I know, I know some of the wisest people I've ever met weren't even believers. So it just makes me wonder, you know, about that. He gives generously to all without finding fault, to ask for wisdom. And going back to that movie clip, we, we sit around and think a lot and conjure up situations that don't even exist. Um, Pastor and I talk, he's a phlegmatic personality, which um, don't tell him I told you this, okay? But it has a tendency to see the cup half empty instead of half full. Well, I'm a phlegmatic, I mean, I'm a sanguine. I see the cup half full. It's always half full. That won't take four hours to do. It'll take one hour, and we'll have fun doing it, you know? 
Um, but since he's a phlegmatic, he has a tendency to speculate and to go over all the scenarios. Well, the, it, this could, doesn't he do that, Todd? Yeah. This could happen and that could happen and what about this? And I always say, why are you borrowing trouble from tomorrow? Thinking about things that will never happen and talking yourself out of the good things of life. Mm -hmm. We sit around thinking too much instead of getting wisdom from above. We conjure up conversations that never happened. Um, we imagine that someone's mad at us when they're not, they're like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Instead of taking everything this way, we have a tendency to depend on earthly, natural wisdom that reaches out this way, has fingers, and it goes like this. Instead of reaching our hands up this way to get wisdom and bring it down. You know, it, it's in here. This is the way that we receive it. Arms wide open. Just like we sang earlier, we, we receive grace. Arms wide open to him. And not depend in our life on earthly wisdom. I mean, if you're going to get that idea that makes your boss notice you more than anyone else, aren't you going to have to think a thought you've never thought before? That sounded like something from the Wizard of Oz, didn't it? I, I say this regularly. Lord, I already know everything I know. Please teach me something else. Bring someone into my life that knows something that I don't already know so that I have some more information. Um, did I give you Proverbs chapter 1, Kim? No, okay, I'll, I'll just, can you go there? Proverbs chapter 1, and we'll start with verse 2. I don't think I can put these back on. To, uh, Proverbs chapter 1, look what this says about wisdom. It says, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive words of understanding. You know, if I go back to chapter, or to verse 1, it says, this is a book of wisdom written by Solomon. He wants us to have wisdom so bad that he wrote you a whole book about it. A whole book. Go to the next verse, please. Verse 3. And it says, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. Just keep scrolling down. We'll just keep reading. To give prudence to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear. This is what I wanted you to get. A wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will, uh, will attain wise counsel. So... I'm not saying I'm all wise. I'm just saying I'm wise enough to know that I already know everything I know. I need to be around people who know some things that I don't know or another way to do it. Just because the, I do it a certain way doesn't mean it's the right way or the only way. It's just a way of doing something. So I always want to gain information. Um, we have a friend in our family that She's uh, going to school, and we're, we're like, my goodness, you already have multiplied degrees. Why do you keep going to school? And she said, because I always want to make myself marketable. I want to know what's next. I want to know what's trending. I want to know what's on the horizon. How wise is that to, know, to learn something that you don't already know? And too often we get stuck right here in our rut, in our lane of this is it, but this is not it. And I'm telling you, God wants to impart wisdom to you in a way that you've never known. He wants to get your businesses to the next level. He wants your marriage to be the happiest occasion of your life every time you go home. He wants you to have the job of your dreams. He wants, he wants, he wants for you. You think you want? God wants for you. And everything that you need to do those things is already in you in deposit form. And now we need to learn to pull them out. It's like we said at the very beginning, you don't have a marriage problem, you have a wisdom problem. You do not have a financial problem, you have a wisdom problem. You do not have problems on this level, you have wisdom problems. But he has been made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification. Now, in James, it does say, ask and he gives liberally to all. He gives generously to all. But in James, it also says that when you ask for wisdom, sometimes you, you come up short because you're, ask, you're asking for the wrong thing. It says you ask amiss. 
means you're asking for the wrong thing. And the good news about that is, is that he'll even direct you in how to ask for the right thing. Just like when I was sick, remember I was telling you the headaches. I'd say, Lord, I need healing. He says, no, you need wisdom. Oh, I, need, I, I don't feel good. I need healing. No, you need wisdom. He'll even direct your asking if you'll line yourself up to wisdom and not just be so intent to do your own thing. I mean, really, figure it out. We've been doing our own thing long enough, and this is what we've got. Is this what we want? And, you know, to some degree, you can say, this is great. Yeah, but is this it? To get the, the it, we're going to have to have the wisdom from above. And he will lead us even in our asking on what we need. I don't know what I need. If I knew what I need, wouldn't I be doing it? Wouldn't I already have it? Wouldn't I be going after it? But sometimes there's that one little, little, that, have you ever had somebody tell you something that as soon as they said it, you went, it's like I always knew that, but I didn't know. I knew it in here, but I didn't know that I knew it. But now that I know it, I always knew that. That's the wisdom of God on the inside of you. Some of the things that I've been learning lately just by the revelation of the Spirit of God, I'm like, finally. That's why when someone would preach or teach this one thing, it would irritate my spirit. I'd just be like, no. In fact, um, I, I'd go home and I'd go, I don't believe that. You know, pastor and I would go home from special meetings or something. i go, I don't agree with that. I don't believe that. And I don't know why, but some, you know, you just don't know. But then you hear something that you've never heard before, but you knew it anyway. It sits down on your heart, and you go, oh, that was wisdom from heaven. And that's how the grace of God has been to us. You know, I remember one time having failed so horribly in life, and the Lord saying to me through three different, uh, through three different voices, one was in a letter, one was in a phone call, and one was on my knees in prayer, that he was not disappointed in me and that I had not sinned against him. And I was shocked. I was like, what? And he said, no, you have not sinned against me. What? Well, then I didn't understand grace. I didn't know what I was saying. I thought, I can't tell anybody that, about this. They'll think I'm a blasphemer, you know. But now that I understand grace, I understand what he said to me 25 years ago. It took me 25 years to get the full understanding of what he was saying. But I understand it now. It's what I would always knew that I knew, but I'd never heard before. And that's what wisdom will do for you. I've seen the light go on in people's eyes. They're trying to work something out. We were doing it today, Todd. We were talking, working some stuff out. And I go, I got the answer. I got it. I know what to do. I know what to do. I didn't have that thought 30 seconds ago, but now I have the thought right now. It came from heaven. Because our heart is to know wisdom. And let me take you back to Ephesians chapter 1, where we started several years ago. In verse 17, it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of who is him. That he would give you the spirit of wisdom in the knowledge of Jesus. You need wisdom to know Jesus. But all of the, the here's the cool thing about Jesus. You need wisdom to understand him, but he is the wisdom to understand him. And you have his spirit. Who can know a man except the spirit of a man? But he has given you his spirit. Now, another translation says, you have the mind of Christ. And you're like, I don't get that. Um, no, I, I no. What that means is you have his spirit. The spirit of wisdom is on the inside of you. And so, Father, tonight, as we've looked at your word, and we realize we have a great need in this day for wisdom. Wisdom to know how to raise kids in a world that wants to tell us what the rules are about it. Wisdom to know how to come and go in our everyday dealings because political correctness and protocol contradicts us. Wisdom to know how to increase in our finances because the stock market is so changing and inconsistent. Wisdom to know how to have blended marriages 
when there's no instruction in the Bible that says for a blended marriage do this. We just need wisdom. We need to know how to live our lives here on the earth with the full design that you have planned from the very beginning for us. And so we ask you for wisdom, just as James chapter 1 says, if anyone lacks wisdom, and we all lack it, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives generously to all without finding fault. So with arms wide open, we receive your wisdom, Lord Jesus. Today, Ford, we receive wisdom. And we thank you that you don't hold anything of our past against us. We're not having to sleep in a bed that we made, but that you are rescuing us and redeeming those times when we possibly weren't, were not wise. And you're making them up in your divine plan and wisdom. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, that went fast. Just started. Time to go. Well, you are dismissed.